Hi, my name's Terry. Welcome back to my workshop. Um, I've had a number of people ask me how I built this table saw bench, um, how I inserted the table saw, and is there any plans? Basically, there isn't any plans. I don't really make plans. I sort of, I do sometimes, but I sort of uh, make it up as I go along. Now, when I built this, I completely forgot to video it. I was in the zone at the time, and I just cracked on and got it done. Um, but I did take a number of photos. Why I didn't video it, I do not know. But I've got quite a few photos showing how it went together. So this video is going to be slightly different in as much as it won't be a video, it'll be more like a slideshow or a collage of photos showing how it was built. But hopefully you'll get an idea of how it went together. So I'll show you those in a second. Uh, before I do that, a few people have asked me sizes. So let me give you some measurements. Handy tape measure holder just here. The bench is 64 inches long or 162 centimetres. The width is 37 and a half inches or 95 centimetres. The height, including the claspers, is 35 inches or 88 centimetres. But don't forget that does include four inch, co coast, uh, the four inch coasters, which are mounted at the bottom. As you can see, it fits quite nicely. I'll turn the bench around so you can see it. It moves really easily, as you can see. The saw is designed to fit exact, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, all but this strip along the back, which you need, because if you own this saw, you'll know that this goes all the way across, up to the side blade, and all the way out. So you need this insert at the back for it to run along the rack and pinion that's fitted at both ends of the saw. So that works quite well. Lock into place as you know. I've put a number of other features onto this as well. Silly, silly little things. Pencil holder, simply made out of some PVC tubing. Always handy to have a pencil right next to the saw. On the other side, got a really handy tape measure, tape measure holder. It's a little holder. The miter gauge. Which I very rarely use because, as you all know, I made a cross cut sled for my saw. Handy screwdriver, again, fixed on the magnet, and that's just purely there for the purpose of this. Okay. Um, the rest of the bench, as you can see, I mainly use for storage, store materials, uh, my pencils, and at the other end. Mounted. Again, really simple. And it acts really good. As you can see, for storing your clamps, your small clamps anyway. And I've got some larger clamps still just there. Works really, really well. Okay, so let me move on and show you how I put it together. Right, let's get started. It's time to remove the old Titan table saw. This is easy to remove because it was simply bolted down with four bolts as you can probably see. With that now out of the way, we have an empty space as you can see. The shelf is already there. This may not necessarily be at the right height, but that's an easy fix. But first things first, I want to fix a new top. So, tons of wood glue, as you can see. I'm going to cover this with a brand new sheet of 18mm ply. As you can see, I've clamped this all the way around. Um, I did put some weight in the middle as well, but there's no photographs of that, unfortunately. I actually left this for two days to dry. I placed the saw roughly where I want it to go, but now it's time to get some exact measurements. I took the table saw measurements and made sure that the table saw sat central to the bench. Now I decided to put down some masking tape, so should I get the measurements wrong, I can rip it up and start again. Now on to the brave part, time to start sawing. I always prefer to use a handsaw when I'm cutting anything like this. 
Well, that went surprisingly well. Um, you will notice in the picture in a second that I've had to cut right the way across on the right hand side. That allows for the rack and pinion mechanism on the saw. Now you can't see it very well in this photograph, but once I'd cut out the hole at the narrowest point of the tabletop, if that makes sense, I was then able to drop the table into the hole and the outer wings acted as a template. I drew round those with a pencil, removed the saw and then cut out the shape using a coping saw. I then tidied up the cuts with the electric sander. Now I've just remembered why I cut this straight on the right hand side. It's so you can get to the locking mechanism on the fence. When the fence is in position you want to lock it down, there's a lever on the right hand side of this saw. For those of you that own this saw, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you need to be able to get to that lever. I then decided to put a nice chunky edging all the way around the bench. This was 4 by 2 that had been planed down a little bit through the thicknesser. This is thicker than it needed to be, but it was done on purpose because I wanted to put an edging all the way around. And that acts as a shelf for the edging. I now need to think about tidying up these edges. But first of all, let's drop the saw in. So the saw fits perfectly. and I'm really happy with the result. And as you can see in the next couple of pictures, I've tidied up the front edges as well. You may notice I had to route her in a tiny groove just along those two front edges. That allows for the rack and pinion to run smoothly. I then removed the saw and fitted some mounting blocks to hold the legs of the saw in place so the saw doesn't move around. It was then time to remount my vise. That was easier said than done because now the ply was double the thickness so the vise went back in a different place, but that was an easy fix. So with the vise now back in place, it was time to move on to the sides. I had previously countersunk these holes using a 10mm drill bit. This allowed me to cut some dowels at about half inch long, glue and hammer into the holes. Then once the glue has dried, I cut these off with a flush cut saw and give them a good sanding back with the sander. This normally produces quite a nice result as you can see. These next pictures show the grooves I had to route her out to allow for the mechanism of the rack and pinion at the front of the saw and again at the back of the saw. I then attached a cross member along the front. This is attached to the shelf. The reason for this it was so that I could adjust the shelf up and down. Once it was right I then put two screws either side and screwed those into the legs as you can see. The next few pictures just show the finished item. I'm really pleased with the way this turned out. This has actually proved to be a really useful tool um, and gets used not quite daily because I'm only a weekend sort of hobbyist, but I use it all the time. I'm now going to show some features and benefits of the saw, starting off with how I fixed the table saw into the bench. In case you're wondering what holds the saw in place, I've cut two little pieces of plastic and mine is screwed down into my bench, as you can see. There's already two little holes. There was already two little holes built into the saw, as you all know if you already own this saw, and I'm sure that's what they're for. Come round to the side. I've also got, as you can see, two pieces of timber to stop it from moving. That's also, should I take the saw out at any point, when it goes back in, I know it's going back in exactly the same position, providing the screws at the front line up. This is quite handy as well. I've also put a little table, uh, not table, a cable 
tie rack onto there as well, which works quite well. On the underside, I have a cut out ready for dust extraction. Now a cam vac with a two and a half inch hose. For those of you not familiar with the cam vac, it's one of those or one of those. This is a double motor um, version, which is slightly bigger at 55 liters as well. Now that's got a two and a half inch hose that comes out of that. And that fits absolutely perfectly. As you can see, you couldn't wish for a better fit. As you can see, the wings on the left hand side fit quite closely and are all part of the bench. A lot of people thought they were separate, they're not. As I say, the cutout along the back has to be there to allow for the rack and pinion to slide freely. And that goes right away to the end and stops with a quarter of an inch to spare. Okay. This could do with tidying up, I guess there's not really much need. Now the beauty of this bench is it's double thick because I already had a bench here. And I already had 18 mil ply. So with another layer of 18 mil ply, this is now sitting at 36 mil. So it's really, really sturdy. And I know it's completely flat. As you can see, I fitted this with four inch lockable casters. I started off with three inch, but they were nowhere near strong enough. So I moved those over to my mitre saw bench. So as you can see, the three inch casters now live on my mitre saw station. This is perfect because I never moved the mitre saw station. That stays against the wall permanently. Um, there is a video on the build of this as well if you're interested. Now the legs on this are pretty sturdy. I didn't want this bench to have much movement at all. So it might be over the top, but it's made with what we better know as four befores. Just like this. They're not exactly four before, as you know, but they're pretty damn close. They're nice and strong. The top, although you can't see it from here, underneath is five by one. I've then gone round that afterwards with four by two, as you can see. And on the front. On the front, I had to router out these recesses again to allow for the rack and pinion, which hopefully you can see. The bottom of the bench is three by one. And then the bench has two cross molders that run across on both sides and is then strengthened again with 18 mil ply at both ends. That gives it plenty of strength and makes the bench really nice and rigid. Underneath, you will see, has three cross members. And then again, another real strong piece of ply, which helps hold the saw in place and holds the table that actually holds the saw. Again, making it nice and strong. Cross-cut sled, as you all know, it fits in just here. Now this has gone a little bit stiff, um, so what I tend to do, every now and then, is a little bit of machine wax. You can buy this anywhere. Um, I tend to get this one. It comes from Axe Minster. It's very good. Try a little bit of blue roll, and it really doesn't need much at all. There's a rub down each side. And you will see. That's the difference. And this is just a quick walk around so you can see the bench from all angles.
Uh, okay, so that's pretty much wrapped up this video stroke um, photo collage, if you like. Um, I'm hoping that gives you, um, or the people that have asked me, an idea of how I put the bench together. Uh, again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.